Eddie, um, you've been involved in research uh, in Grange for quite a while now, and Chagas have always been pushed the idea of paddocks, rotational grazing, um, and we've been doing it for a good few years. I mean, what are the advantages if someone would move from set stocking towards a paddock or a rotational uh, grazing system? I think, Aidan, the, the biggest advantage is around how you can manage grass and manage the stock. There's no doubt that if you want to, and we know that grass grows various throughout the season, so if you're on one block of land, it becomes impossible to manage that. If you take that, that farmer and divide it into fields, be it, or into paddocks, be it five, six, seven, ten, that count, number doesn't matter right now. It means that once you have paddocks, even if the same amount of grass grows, it means that you can see it much more easily. You can see surfaces building up. And I think to me, the key to managing grass is to be able to obviously to match animal demand with supply. That's what it's all about. But when you have a paddock system in place, it means the variable grass growth that takes place, you're able to see it and manage it. It means you can see throughout the, the, the paddocks where they are. You might want them to have like the steps of the stairs in terms of a feed wedge, so you know the paddock that's strongest you go into the next time, and so on, so on. So it gives you tremendous ability to manage grass. And of course, in the, in the video we've just seen, Sean made a point as well, that in terms of managing stock, you're with stock every day, you're moving stock every day, Every, every two, every three days. And there's, the way stock respond to that in terms of docility and quietness is actually another bonus. But to me, the main issue with paddocks is, that the main um, benefit is managing grass. Yeah, good point. Uh, and I mean, I was delighted that, that Sean actually brought up the point in terms of what it does with regard to, you know, quietening stock, using it as a tool, you know, to look at the health of the stock uh, when he's out herding every day, it's, it, it, you know, that can't be underemphasized. Uh, and, you know, from a part-time farmer point of view, that has to be a major plus where stock will literally follow you from paddock to paddock as opposed to you looking to maybe drive stock. Uh, Sean, one of the things, uh, and I've been involved with the Better Farm program over the years, and one of the things that we set out in that program was we wanted fellas to become very good grassland managers. And one of the things that we... Uh, looked for them to do was to measure grass. Now, I realize that your stocking rate, you know, it's important that you measure grass maybe compared to some other farms, but, you know, what motivates you to go out on a weekly basis to measure grass? I take it you're using pasture base? Yeah, yeah. And the reason I'm asking that is, we've seen lads over the years fall off the wagon when it comes to actually measuring. So what to you, what motivates you, what gets you out on a Monday morning to say, I'm walking the farm, I'm going to take covers? What? Yeah. So apart from just getting a good 13 kilometre walk in, it's, uh, it's a great, op it, it allows me to make decisions. It's probably, you know, at my stocking rate, it's the most important two hours that I can spend on the farm that week because looking at the week ahead, it makes all my decisions for me based off the information I gather, whether Am I cutting silage this week? Am I needing to speed up my round, slow down my round, go in with fertilizer, go out with slurry? What are my decisions? What management decisions am I going to make this week or do I need to make this week? They're all made on the grass walk. So it's essentially what I call it, the walk plus pasture base are giving you the confidence to make these decisions that you know that you can basically stand over. Yeah, so it's, it's information. You can't make a decision if you don't have the information. Um, and having that information means that you can make a more reliable decision and you have a higher chance of making the right decision. Okay. Uh, Krusty, I come in to you tomorrow morning. I tell you I have a block of 40 acres available. It's basically been managed in such a way at the moment that's been set stock. I maybe haven't got the budget that was available to Sean in order to put in the paddocks that he has in the water system or whatever. I mean, you know, if a client presents themselves with that and you're trying to get them to use grass that wee bit better. You know, what are the key couple of things that you would advise him or her uh, with regard to what they need to do to improve the, the sort of grazing infrastructure that ultimately will give them better grass utilization? I suppose the first thing in is that, you know, if there are large fields there, you'd have to try and sort of break that down into smaller areas. Uh, you know, I would, I would suggest a small step, maybe to paddock up with temporary reels, as Sean has done, maybe half of that area, say 20 acres of land. So the advantage there is, okay, it's a decision made, but it's not a permanent decision. If, the, if somebody is not happy with it, and I have yet to come across a farmer who puts in paddocks, 
and who reversed out and, and, and decided that they weren't for them. So, you know, a small investment, maybe two water troughs, buy a couple of reels, um, you're set up in, in with very small investment. Um, and the farmer will see there as time goes on. So that's the first big decision you make, which is not really a big one. But if you think about it, and as Eddie pointed out earlier, trying to manage grass later, once you divide the area up into smaller sections, it's like a game of chess. Every move is a small move. So if you decide to make a decision to take out a paddock, you're only taking out maybe one hectare or half a hectare, as opposed to having to take out half a field, maybe half of that area, eight hectares. So the subsequent decisions thereafter are all small decisions. Um, and when you're moving your stock around from, that's, that you're getting your walk in like Sean. If you're moving every two days, you know, you're out there three to four times a week moving the stock around so you can see how, gra how grass is growing. So I, I think, you know, it's, it, to go down the paddock route, you can go down there very si cheaply, very simply, and it's a reversible decision if you're not happy with it. Or if you want to decide to take silage out of that field later, you just take up your reels, you move on. For the average stock farm, uh, for example, that may not be just fully set up uh, in terms of being able to do a grass walk every week in terms of the actual measurement, I mean, how important is it, Ed, um, Christy, that, that we just encourage people to get out there and to walk the grazing block, uh, you know, with maybe not have to record the actual covers, but just to get out there to see what way things are growing, to see what's happening ahead of the cattle or whatever? Yeah, I think there's only two things really you need to appreciate when you're going around there. Is number one is the paddock grazed out, and we've seen on, on, on Sean's video there what four centimetres is. So what, at what stage should you go in? At what stage should you leave the paddock? And, and what stage then should you leave that paddock and move on and maybe take it out for here silage? So they're all small, minute decisions, but you're out there three days a week, very minimum, um, and you can, you can get a very clear picture of, which way, of the way grass is growing. If that f field is left in maybe two uh, or three or four fields, you're walking in three or four fields, you don't, you don't generally, if they're set stocked, you don't see any variation within the field. Whereas if you have it in partitioned like a chessboard, as I say, you will see the black and the white, you'll see it grazed out, you'll see the paddocks that are getting a bit strong, and you can make a decision then to leave, leave those out. And again, as I say, it's not something that you can't change later on. You know, you can go in and you can decide to do a permanent situation or a permanent paddock system later on. But, uh, you know, as Sean has gone up with big numbers in his divisions through the use of reels and temporary fences there. And Eddie, just to go back a wee bit on the research side, I mean, Sean mentioned that his, he had one hectare paddocks and they were lasting approximately two days. Is there any sort of optimum size paddock? You know, should we be looking to move stock every day, every two days, every three days? You know, what advice would you get farmers there? To me, the, the simplest way to look at it is, you know, whatever number of fields you have, the more you can divide, the better in some ways. But let's cut, cut to the chase and say, if someone told me I have a paddock for three days and I have seven of them or eight of them, I'd say, good luck to you. You use those paddocks to the best of your ability. And if you want to subdivide, as Christy said, with a simple reel, with the trough apparently in the right, in the right place, that's what you do. I mean, let's not overcomplicate this. It should be a simple thing. It's the same for the measurements. If people might shy away from having the plate meter, initially, let's walk it, call it a number, say what, what the, your, your suggested cover is. The most important thing is that you go week after week, or indeed several times a week when you're moving cattle, to see what's on the ground. Is there more grass there now than there was yesterday? And if there is, it's going ahead of you. If there's less grass, you need to make some decisions. So let's not complicate it. To me, grassland management, particularly for rotational grazing, is a very simple technique and tool to have. 